we will now look at uh, applications of weak and weak star topologies in functional analysis. So, we will start with reflexive spaces. So, recall V is a norm linear space, then you have a canonical embedding G from V to V double star. So, J x acting on any f equals f x for all f in V star. This is the canonical embedding, this is an isometry. So, J is uh, isometry. And if j on to, then we say v is reflexive. Okay, so now we are going to characterize reflexive spaces using the weak topology. Okay, so notation. So, unit closed unit ball in V, V star, V double star will be donate will be denoted by B, B star, B double star respectively. Okay, so the first theorem, very nice and important theorem. So, V Banach, V reflexive if and only if B is weakly compact. That means compact in the weak topology. So, you know that B can never be norm compact and if you are in V star then you know B star is weak star compact. But for reflexive spaces the unit ball, closed unit ball is weakly compact and that characterizes reflexive spaces. So, proof. So, let us prove first assume that B is weakly compact. So, B is weakly compact. Then J from B to BB, so J from V to V double star is an isometry, therefore it is continuous, therefore we have seen that it is also weakly continuous and therefore JB is weakly compact in V double star. Continuous image of a compact set is compact. That is all. Okay. So, then if it is compact in the weak topology, then it will be compact in any smaller topology. So, this implies JB is weak star compact. Weak star topology is Hausdorff, compact subsets in a Hausdorff space are closed. So, JB is weak star closed. Therefore, JB equals JB closure in the weak star topology, but we saw this result uh, uh, in the previous uh, session that this is nothing but B double star. So, JB equals B double star. So, J is on to the unit ball to the unit ball and therefore, it is on to from. So, this implies J is on to because if it is on to on the unit ball, it will be on to on the entire space. So, this implies V reflexive. Okay. So, now let us do the opposite thing. So, V is reflexive. That means the weak and the weak star topologies on V star coincide. Therefore, by Bana Kaloglu theorem, B star is weak star compact that is weakly compact in V star in V star. So, if B star is weak, weak, uh, weakly compact the previous by previous arguments this shows that 
uh, V star is reflexive by the first part of this theorem. If V star is reflexive, then this implies that B double star in V double star is weakly compact. Because again in V double star the weak and the weak, uh, weak star topology is coincide. Therefore, B double star by the Banaka Logulu is weak star compact and therefore it is weakly compact also. And then we have that B is nothing but J inverse of B double star because V is reflexive and therefore uh, J and J inverse are isometries. So, they are continuous therefore weakly continuous and consequently implies B is weakly compact. So, J is continuous implies weakly continuous. Okay, so, B. So, this proves the theorem complete. So, now there are lots of nice corollaries to this uh, result. So, corollary. So, V and W Banach and T from V to W isometric isomorphism. That means T is an isomorphism, T and T inverse are continuous and it is a 1 1 on 2 map and T is an isometry and therefore it takes preserves the norms. Then so if V is reflexive then W is also reflexive. Proof. If you take BV the un closed unit ball in V and BW the closed unit ball in W then T of BV equals BW. Now V reflexive implies BV weakly compact and T is continuous and therefore it is weakly continuous. So, B W is weakly compact implies W reflexive. Okay. Next corollary V reflexive Banach space and W closed subspace. then W is also reflexive. So, proof. So, what is the weak topology on W is nothing but the weak topology on V restricted to W. So, check. We will do this in the exercises, but it, I would recommend that you check it yourself. Just a simple consequence of the Han Banak theorem because every continuous linear functional can be extended to the whole space. So, you can check that the weak star neighborhoods, weak neighborhoods are precisely the weak neighborhood in V intersection with W. Okay, so that is all that you have to show, and therefore, if you have so we have B. What is the closed unit ball in W? This is nothing but the closed unit ball in V intersection W. So, W is closed and it is a subspace. So, it is a closed subspace implies weakly closed and BV is weakly compact. So, BW is also weakly compact implies W reflex. Okay. Next corollary V Banak then V reflexive if and only if V star reflexive. So, proof. So, V reflexive implies V star reflexive already done. Why? We have seen this namely if you V is reflexive then B star 
is weakly compact by the banaka logalu theorem because the weak and weak star topologies are the same and therefore if it's weakly compact we already showed that v is uh, the space is reflexive therefore v star is reflexive so v reflexive implies v star reflexive we have already shown so now let us assume v star reflexive so this implies that v double star is reflexive by this argument and j v contained in v double star is a closed subspace. So, by the previous corollary we have j v is reflexive and this implies v is reflexive since j from v to j v is a isometric isomorphism. Okay, so that proves. So V is reflexive if and only if V star is reflexive. Okay. So for instance, we know that L1 is not reflexive because L infinity star is not L1. But then, uh, so L1 is not reflexive, uh, so L infinity cannot be reflexive either. Okay. So next corollary, V reflexive and k contained in v closed bounded and convex implies k is weakly compact so it's not just the ball which is weakly compact every closed bounded uh, convex set is automatically weakly compact proof so k is bounded. So, this implies that k is contained in some m times the unit ball. Okay. So, m times the unit ball this is weakly compact because it is just scaling the unit ball and uh, since v is reflexive and k is a closed convex set. So, it is weakly closed and therefore, a closed subset of a compact set is compact in the Hausdorff space therefore, k is weakly compact. So that proves that result. Okay. So proposition. Let V W be Banach and W reflexive. Let A, which is an unbounded operator, de defined in B, taking values in W, B closed and densely defined then so it is densely defined so the adjoint is defined so then a star is also densely defined so we made this remark already a star need not be in general densely defined but a star is always closed so a is densely defined you can define a star and A star is closed, this is what we know. But if A is closed and densely defined, then A star is densely defined and you know A star is closed. So, A star is also closed and densely defined, so proof. Okay. So, what do you want to show? So, let phi, we want to show that D of A star is dense. So, we are going to use the Han Banach theorem. Let phi belong to V double star. Uh, w double star sorry such that phi equal to 0 on d a star to show phi is equal to 0 every in w star okay w double star okay so something which vanishes on a set vanishes everywhere and therefore you want to show that it is. But W is reflexive. So, this implies that there exists a Y in W such that phi V, this is in W double star to W star is equal to V Y, uh, this is in W star W for all uh, V in W. W star. 
okay this is the meaning of reflexive so that means uh, every, every functional occurs as an evaluation okay so to show y equal to 0 because phi is essentially determined by y so we want to show that phi equal to y equal to 0 okay y to show y equal to 0 so what is given we are given the wy equal to 0 for all w in domain of a star okay so if not if y is not 0 then 0 y does not belong to the graph of a 0 is in domain of a and if 0 y has to be in graph of a y has to be a of 0 that is 0 which is not true so 0 y does not belong to the graph of a ok so y is in uh, w ok so it is not in the graph of a ok so therefore by Han Banach there exists fv and graph of a is closed remember that that is given to you because a is a closed operator that means graph of a is closed so there exists fv in v star cross w star so this is closed and this is contained in v cross w so the dual space is v cross cross w star which does not vanish on 0 y so that means such that v y is not 0 ok but f u this is from v star uh, v plus v a u this is in w star w is 0 for all u in d then what is this mod v a u this is less than equal to norm f into norm u and this implies that v belongs to domain of a star and f equals a star v but if v is in domain of a star this implies v y has to be 0 that is the given condition which is a contradiction we are given that w y is 0 for all w and d a star and therefore this is a contradiction ok so this proves this theorem. So, this is a contradiction. So, y has to be 0 that means d a star is dense ok. So, now let us assume that v and w are both reflexive and v uh, and a from d a contained in v to w is closed and densely defined. then we just saw that a star which is defined on d a star contained in v uh, w star going into v star ok and this is defined because a is densely defined this is also closed and densely defined this is by the previous proposition. So, a double star from d a double star contained in v double star going into w double star is defined because a star is densely defined a double star is defined but we are going to take v reflexive so this is can be identified with v and this can be identified with w so we consider a double star defined on d a double star contained in v going into w. So, we can consider it like this and uh, because we can identify being both all spaces being reflexive v double star can be identified with v and w double star uh, can be identified with w. So, then the theorem 
nice important theorem. So, let V and W be reflexive Banach spaces and A from D A contained in B going into W closed and densely defined. then a double star equal to so these two mappings are the same so when do you say two unbounded operators are the same you have to show that the domains are the same and you must also show that the action on each member of the domain is the same so so proof need to show d a double star equal to d a and for every u in d a we have to show a double star u equals a u that is enough to show graph of a double star equals graph of a because what is graph of A? It is a domain, all the first coordinates are in the domain and the second coordinate is the action and these two are the same, that means the mappings are one and the same. Okay. So, recall you have this script to J from W star cross V star to V star cross W star, J of V f is minus F V. And then we saw that J of G A star, this was already shown, is nothing but G A perp. So, G A double perp will be J of G A star perp. Okay, so what does this, what does this mean? So, what is G A double perp? This is J of G A star perp. So, this should consist of all elements V w in V cross w, which kill every element of J G A star. Now, what does J G A star looks like? So, J of G A star will be looking like minus a star phi 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 in d a star ok. So, that is j of g a star. So, we want v w to kill all of them. So, we want such that minus a star phi v. So, this is in v star v plus phi w and this is in w star w equal to 0 and this should be true for all phi in d a star. Now, this relationship tells you that mod a star phi w is phi w which is less than or equal to norm w norm phi and therefore, this tell for all phi in d a star a star phi v sorry and this tells you that v belongs to d of a double star and a star v equals w a double star v sorry equals w and therefore, so keeping that in mind this is nothing but, so v must be in d a double star so this is all v w in d a double star cross w such that a, a, d a double star. 
this is an a double star v equals w and that is precisely graph of a double star. Therefore, graph of a double star equals g a double perp, but you know double perp in the base space is nothing but the closure, so g a closure, but a is a closed operator and therefore this is equal to g a and that completes the proof of the theorem. Okay, so that is so we will next look at separable spaces in the next session.